And then a viewer said, let there be light. Or rather, he said, let there be an answer to the question, how does light affect human behavior? Same thing, really. So there's a structure in your brain called the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Great name. Research has shown that our suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN for short, is our internal pacemaker, meaning that it takes external stimuli and then rearranges our bodily processes around these stimuli. For example, light is an external stimuli. Now, light is processed by your eyeballs in three different ways. You've got rods, which process light and then send a message to your brain so your brain can process that light as electrical information. Cones, which process color. And you've got a third class of cells that exist on your retina called intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells. This is just a fun tangential fact, but you can actually detect motion more clearly from your peripheral vision than if you were looking at it straight on. Because you have more rods on the outside of your retina than you do in the middle, and rods are better detecting motion than cones are. So if you see something in your peripheral vision, and then you try and look at it head on, it's not there, it might still be there. Now all the cells in your retina transmit light and color as a message to your brain, but your IPRGCs transmit light from your retina to your suprachiasmatic nucleus. These IPRGCs contain a protein called melanopsin. Melanopsin is a kind of protein that changes shape depending on the kind of wavelength of light it comes into contact with. So during the day, until about early to mid-afternoon, the sun's rays are hitting the Earth's atmosphere at an angle that emits blue wavelength light. This is also the answer to the classic question, why is the sky blue? As the sun starts to set in the afternoon, the angle of the sun is producing a red-orange wavelength light, which is also what causes sunsets. Because melanopsin responds differently to these two wavelengths of light, it'll send different messages to your brain. For example, when you're woken way too early by the light coming in through your bedroom window, no. It's because your retina has helpfully detected blue wavelength light. And now your retina has sent a message to your brain saying, make cortisol, which is what makes us more alert and will raise our body temperature. In contrast, when it gets darker at night, our retina sends a message to our brain to start producing melatonin, which is what makes us sleepy. Believe it or not, all that with a fancy vocab is just the basics of the brain and light. That's how we wind up with our circadian rhythm, or why we sleep when we do. Research indicates that almost every animal, from grasshoppers to whales, has some sort of inner pacemaker, like our suprachiasmatic nucleus, that tells them when to do what, and the behaviors that result are inextricably linked to external stimuli. For example, if you create an artificial light cycle, an animal will rearrange its circadian rhythm to match up with that light cycle, instead of referring to the true light cycle, which it can no longer sense. We humans tend to screw up our circadian rhythms a lot with our electronic screens, like our phones, our TVs, and our computers, because they produce blue wavelength light, which keeps us alert a lot longer than we should be. Man, what, what is the matter with you? Hmm? I stayed up until three on Tumblr. Again? Really? Why? The quality and presence of light can also severely affect our mood. Do you have a friend who gets really grumpy in the winter? I'm guessing that you do, because one, I am that friend. And two, about 10 to 20% of Americans feel at least mildly meh during the winter months. It's usually because of a disorder called Seasonal Affective Disorder, or SAD for short. Sad. How appropriate. In the winter, since the days are shorter, it's dark, longer, and the sun is farther away from the Earth's surface so we don't get as much of the sunshine that we crave, our brains produce more melatonin than usual, which means we're sleepy, sluggish, and just overall tired. What do you mean I can't hibernate from November to February? You're not my mom. <sighs> Additionally, we spend so much time indoors nowadays, exposed to white or yellow artificial light, that we might experience depression-like symptoms if we're not getting enough natural sunshine. There is so much more to talk about regarding light and the brain. How light can affect our memory-making abilities, how light can be closely associated with a certain memory, which is why some lighting may feel more nostalgic than others do. And since there's so much more to explore on the topic that I don't really feel like I can cover in a short video, I'm gonna post the details in a blog post on my blog, which you should check out in the next couple of days for that post to come out. And you should also check out this link to a video on how blind people perceive light. Spoiler alert, they don't just see darkness all the time. Check it out. So thanks for watching. Thanks to Alonzo for the question. Like and subscribe on Facebook and Twitter. And send me more questions in all of the places. And I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>
process light. What is happening? Why? Why is there Mexican opera music? Why? Uh, research. Re <laughs> well, what? 